Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're delving into the darker side of history, exploring the mysterious and bone-chilling world of crime. Spain, a country known for its rich culture and vibrant history, has also been a haunting ground for some of the most notorious serial killers. Number 1. Manuel Delgado Villegas, El Arapiero. It is possible that Manuel Delgado Villegas, known as El Arapiero, was the greatest assassin in the history of Spain. His nickname, Arapiero, comes from that his father was dedicated to selling Europe, and he helped him. This man confessed to the murder of 47 people, committed between 1964 and 1971. Among the victims was his partner. According to the investigators of the case, with some of its victims, he practiced necrophilia. His modus operandi was a deadly carat punch on the front of his neck, just at the height of the nut, which he learned in the Legion. Other times he used blunt objects, such as bricks or knives. Some of his victims died strangled. It was even said that the choice of its victims was random and indiscriminate, without any planning. It seems that he showed no remorse for his actions. The investigators of the case called him egocentric and megalomaniac with a total lack of empathy towards his victims. The Era Piero has a record of preventive arrest without legal protection in Spain, becoming pre-legal without a lawyer for six and a half years. Number 2. Andras Radin, the killer of the crossbow. Andras Radin, Premier de March 1972, killed his father with a medieval crossbow he had bought for Reyes. After the homicide, he turned himself into the police and admitted to being the author of three derailments of commuter trains, which he carried out a month before killing his father. It was a sabotage that caused no injuries, but a lot of fear. It could have been deadly for hundreds of people. He murdered his father, apparently by a discussion about the temperature of a glass of milk. He killed him with three shots of arrows. Rabadin declared that he loved his father and that he killed him without knowing what he was doing guided by the voices he heard. Being aware of what he had just done, he shot two more arrows to end his father's suffering. It seems that Andras Rabadin's childhood was not easy, since he had to deal with the suicide of his mother and the fact of spending a lot of time alone with his father, without his brothers or friends. During the expert tests for the trial, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. By judicial order, he was admitted to a psychiatric penitentiary center for 20 years of internment. According to the forensic experts, this mental illness was not enough to not be aware of his actions while he was manipulating the train tracks. But during the Parasite Commission, there are still many speculations today about whether Andres Rabatin poses a danger to society or if he is socially rehabilitated. Some professionals claim that he faked mental illness to be immune from the condemnation of parasite, and others claim that he is a psychopath narcissist who knew what he was doing at all times, and that currently his self-esteem is sustained through the artistic and literary creations he made from prison. Number 3. Alfredo Gallen, the murderer of the deck. Alfredo Gallen Sotillo, known as the murderer of the deck, put the entire Spanish society in suspense in 2003. He is one of the most dangerous serial killers who have circulated in Spain. He belonged to the Spanish army from 2000 to 2004, so he had military skills. Curiously, it seems that he tended to suffer anxiety crises, something not very common in people with a psychopathic profile. He killed his victims with a very powerful weapon, a Yugoslav Tokarev pistol which he took with him to Spain from his military passage through Bosnia. He began to kill in February of 2003, and his first victim was a young man of 28 years. Beside his victims, he left a card, the Ace of Cups, which became his signature and became known as the Killer of the Deck. According to a witness who testified at the trial, the murderer of the deck always said good morning to his victims and then asked them please to kneel. Then he proceeded with the shot. He did it because, according to him, education is the first thing in life. In 2003, Alfredo Gallen stormed into a national police station and confessed to being El Asesino de la Varaja, 
He was sentenced to 140 years in prison for six murders and three attempted murders. Although following the sentences imposed under Spanish criminal law, he would only reach 25 years of sentence.